Namaste. Welcome to the next video of Machine Learning Practice Course. In this video, we'll implement K-means algorithm with sklearn. We first import basic Python libraries like NumPy and Pandas and matplotlib.py plot for plotting. K-means clustering is implemented as part of sklearn.cluster module. Then for this demonstration, we use the digit dataset which is loaded through load underscore digit API from sklearn.datasets module. We'll be selecting the optimal k through sealout score which is implemented as part of sklearn.metrics module and we'll normalize with min-max scalar. Finally, we use pipeline to combine the data preprocessing and clustering part. We'll be using the digit dataset for clustering which is loaded through load digit API. It loads 8 by 8 digit images with approximately 180 samples per class. There are 10 classes and it has got in all 1797 1, images. Each pixel has value between 0 and 16. Let's quickly check the k-means class as implemented in sklearn.cluster module. So you can see the documentation of k-means class by calling k-means by prefixing it with the question mark. So you can see that in, in k-means it takes parameters like number of clusters to form, then there is initialization parameter which could be k-means plus plus or random. k-means plus plus selects initial cluster centers for k-means in a smart way to speed up the convergence whereas random basically initializes the cluster centers randomly. Then there is n underscore init parameter which shows the number of times the k-means algorithm will be run with different centroid seeds. The final result will be the best output of the different runs in terms of the sum of squared error and max iter specifies the maximum number of iterations that we want to run the single k-means algorithm for and finally random state that determines the random number generation for centroid initialization. Since k-means algorithm is susceptible to local minima, we perform multiple k-means run and select the one with the lowest sum of squared error. The total number of time we would like to run k-means algorithm is specified through n underscore init parameter. Max underscore iter specifies the total number of iterations to perform before declaring convergence in any of these runs. Let's first define all the k-means plus string algorithm parameter in a dictionary object. We'll be using random initialization. We'll be running k-means again and again for 50 times and in each iteration we'll be running k-means for 500 iterations and random state is set to zero. Let's define a pipeline with two, two stages. The first one is preprocessing for future scaling with min-max scalar and second is clustering with k-means clustering algorithm. Here we have selected number of clusters equal to 10 and we have specified the other arguments for k-means through this dictionary object. We call the fit function on pipeline uh, with, with the digit data set. We can access the cluster centroids after training the k-means clustering algorithm we can access them via cluster underscore center underscore member variable of k-means class. So k-means class is available at the last stage of pipelines. That's why it's pipeline minus one dot cluster underscore centers underscore give us the cluster centers. We display these cluster centroids in form of the digit images as you can see over here. So in this case, the number of clusters were known, hence we set k equal to 10 and got these clusters. For deciding the optimal number of clusters, we generally use elbow method and sealout method. So we basically train the elbow and sealout method and find out the actual number of k that comes out of these two methods. Here, for some time, we'll pretend that we do not know the number of clusters and this will usually be the case when you are doing clustering in a real life world where 
uh, where we will not be knowing the total number of clusters and we are supposed to come up with the optimal number of k and for that we use elbow and sillhout as two methods so one of the two methods you need to employ so let's see how to use elbow method so in elbow method what we do is we keep track of sum of squared error in a in a in a list and here what we do is we first scale the digits by applying min max scalar and these scale digits are are used for clustering with k means clustering algorithm but number of clusters now varies in the range between 1 to 12 and uh, the sum of squared error that we obtain for different values of k is appended to this particular list and sum of squared error is obtained by accessing inertia underscore member variable of the k means object now you can see that we have plotted the sum of squared error against the number of clusters so we have number of clusters on x axis and sum of squared error on, on y axis and you can see that there is a slight elbow at k equal to 9 and this could point to the fact that few digits may have been merged in a single cluster the second method is a sillout method and in sillout method we basically calculate the sillout score based on the the, the data and the labels that we obtain through k-means clustering algorithm. So here again we train the k-means clustering algorithm with different number of clusters between in the range between 2 to 15 and then we calculate sillout score for, for each clustering solution and the sillout score is appended to the list. So you know this, all, this graph also points the fact that k equal to 9 may be the optimal number of clusters the, which was also revealed by elbow method and this could happen because some digits like 1 and 7 have striking similarity and they have been merged in the in the single cluster so this was a short demonstration of how to use k means clustering algorithm and find out optimal value of k through elbow and sillout methods